In this video, I'd like to show the basics of getting set up with your site of interest. This will be useful for beginners who want a repeatable way to get to that site of interest from week to week so that the settings will be approximately equal. So the very first thing we need to do is wait for the vacuum to get below 5e-5 e millibar. You can see that here. We have a note for that on the bottom of the monitor. And the reason we want to get below 5e-5 e is because the less atmosphere that there is in the chamber, then the slower the contamination will be of your apertures. If the software allows us to turn the beam on at, say, 8e-5 e or even in the minus 4 millibar region, uh, we could operate the beam, we'll just we'll get quicker contamination of those apertures, which will lead to more astigmatism and more problems down the line. So in this case, we can see that the pressure is 6.2 e-6 millibar, so we're ready to go. Uh, at this point, you'd want to choose what voltage and current you want to use. And in this case, 5 kV, 98 picoamps will be fine. We're going to be looking at some aluminum on a silicon chip. I will now turn on the electron beam and unpause the screen. So now we're scanning over our surface. The first thing I probably want to do is locate where I am. So I'm going to zoom as far out as I can and I can see now the outer rim of the pole piece of my electron gun and I can see maybe this is some copper tape that I have there's some charge buildup that was a result of being at a higher magnification on top of it I have a number of things in the chamber here and I know that what I want to look at is towards the right side of my screen that is towards the positive x side of my screen if I look under the navigation page on the map tab, then I know this is a six inch stage, so I don't have to go very far. I could double click probably somewhere around here, and that's about where my sample will be. Uh, I can use the right arrow key. I'm gonna hit that once. That would take me over a set amount towards the right. I'll go back to where I was by pressing the left arrow. Another nice way of doing this is I could, of course, double click, and it'll center on anything new or I can depress the scroll bar on my mouse on this particular software and drive towards the right side of my screen, which is the positive X direction. So here I, I think I've found my silicon chip, and what I'll do is uh, locate my, an edge. Here you can see on the map, I've only moved a little bit on this map, but again, because it's a six inch stage, uh, it's, it's not very far uh, from the center on this display. So now I want to go and zoom in. And when I zoom in, I want to look for something that I can focus on. So maybe either the edge or I can see there's a little particle here. So I'm going to right click to focus. And what I recommend is zooming in until the horizontal field width is something about 100 microns or less. So that when we first focus, we're going to get an accurate focus because we need to tell the microscope where the height of our sample is. So this feature is in focus. Uh, if I turn down the contrast a little, we can see, and maybe turn up the brightness, we can see this edge is in focus, this feature is in focus, and the working distance there is about 12.9 millimeters. So now I know that I my chip is about 12.9 millimeters from the bottom of the pole piece but the microscope does not yet know that. So if I go to the navigation page in the coordinates tab, right now it's only measuring from the bottom up because the microscope does not know where the sample is. It's up to me to tell the microscope where that sample surface is. So when I click this link button, link Z to FWD, and says it's not linked, what's gonna happen is I pass this working distance value, 12.9 millimeters, into my Z value, and now the arrow points down. So now my Z coordinate system is measured from the top down, and this gives me a way to navigate. It's important to measure from the top down because the working distance is a useful value when you're doing microscopy. It'll control the convergence angle of the beam, which leads to uh, differences in the depth of field versus resolution that you might get. So in this case, I think I want to work at about five millimeters. So I'm going to now type in five and press go to. This will move me to within five millimeters from the bottom of the pole piece. Now I'm gonna press go to, and this will also turn into a stop button. You can also 
hover your finger over the escape key on your keyboard in case as we watch the sample move up, it gets too close to the pull piece because you've made some kind of mistake. Now, what, what's happened here is the microscope has moved us to approximately five millimeters away, and it's also done us a favor by setting the focal plane to a five millimeter working distance itself. Uh, this should be an in-focus image, or you might expect it to be, but, it, but it's not. And what that indicates is some discrepancy between the focal plane and where the actual mechanical stage is. So in this case, what I need to do is refocus with my right click. And in this case, I might go and zoom in a little bit more so I can see, say, the texture here. Now, as I get that into focus, and now I'm at a slightly lower horizontal field width so that I can get a more accurate focus, uh, now I really see I'm at about 5.6 millimeters by measure, measured by the focal distance. Uh, if I look at this button, it's telling me that it's recommended that I relink. So the microscope knows that something has gone, uh, something has gone wrong when it made that large stage movement, and so it's recommending a relink. If we look at our Z coordinate, it still thinks it's at five, uh, but again, the microscope knows that there is a discrepancy there. So when I'm in focus, I know that I'm really at 5.6, so I'm gonna tell that to the microscope, and now it knows it's at 5.6. I'm gonna drive again to five, and I always wanna do this twice. I focus, link, drive the stage, and then I wanna refocus, relink, and redrive. And the reason, again, is because that first movement, when your stage is somewhere down here, that first movement, whether it's five or eight or 10 millimeters, the stage won't get it exactly where you want it to go. It takes the second focus, second link, and second drive to get it exactly where you want to be. And this is very important to do this twice because from week to week, that first focus, link, and drive might get you to say 5.2 or 5.6 or 4.8 and if you just left it there then week to week you'd be making all say the measurements of your critical dimensions at different working distances you don't want to do that because the working distance is tied to the magnification of your electron microscope and so if you're making a measurement of a feature at 5.6 versus 5 then you're going to have a slightly different measurement there Okay, so now I'm, I'm where I want to be, but I want to find a feature. So I'm gonna zoom back out, and I'm looking for, in this case, uh, some aluminum squares on my chip. So I'm gonna just drive this way. There's some lines there, but I'm gonna go past those. Ah, so here, I think there's not a lot of contrast, but, oh, no, that's just, no, I think that is actually a feature. So I will find that, and I'm gonna zoom in, and maybe go to a corner here, uh, maybe increase my contrast. Now, what I probably want to do is align the stage. Maybe I want this feature to be perpendicular to my scan axes. So under the stage menu, I'll go to XT Align Feature, I'm in a horizontal align, and I'll simply draw a line along the bottom, press finish. It will do the appropriate rotation, and also it will remember the X and the Y position. You see it's a little bit off, but not very far. So I'll just recenter, zoom back in, and now I've found my feature. I might zoom in to a higher magnification. I'm checking my focus, and you can see here I'm actually about 5.1 millimeters, so there'd be nothing wrong with relinking, telling my microscope I'm at where I really am, 5.05, .05. and if I want to be very precise, I can say go to five. So in this case, I've done the process three times because I want to make sure that I'm really at the focal height that I want for the rest of my session. Uh, usually the two times will be, be enough, but again, you always want to link on the feature that you're going to use and make sure that's where you want it to be. So at this point, I can go through and do an alignment. I'll do source tilt, I'll do a lens alignment, 
I'll check my focus and astigmatism, and that's all covered in another video, so I encourage you to continue there.